Well, this Raw show, I mean, it was... Let me start on the Raw show. This Raw show, this Raw show had, I mean, this was probably the uh, least creative Raw show that I'd ever seen. I was watching this. They did not have a thought in their heads. I mean, it was just like... You could see, like, like if they were going to do a rematch with Miz and Bobby Lashley. I felt like this was every Raw. No, but there's no... Most Raws, there's a lot of thought process to it. This one, I could just feel there's no thought process to it. Uh, well, that's pretty than, sad, because if there's thought process on most Raws and no thought process on this Raw, and I couldn't even tell the difference, I don't know what that tells you. I could tell the difference. I mean, it's like, put it to like Bobby Lashley and, and the Miz open, and if they were going to do that match... If they knew they were going to do that match a week ago, there's no way they're doing that match, that two-minute match, and then the beatdown afterwards, and just total humiliation. And they weren't going to. They were going to do the big celebration. So I'm going to guess that the mentality is is that, well, they did a big rating last week, so let's do it again. It's like, but you did a fucking three-minute blow-off. And what's the explanation for a rematch? You know, and that was, so th that was that. They had freaking Drew McIntyre and Sheamus because they had a good match last week. And there's, you know, it's like Drew can't lose right now. I mean, when they did that thing for no DQ, it's like, what the fuck are they going to do? And the answer is, is that they did a no contest in a no DQ match. I mean, it's just like we got no idea. You know, it's like it's obvious. Like, why did you do a no DQ match and you're going to do a no contest? It's like we they met, had a match where they didn't want to beat Sheamus again. They know they can't beat Drew, but they know that they're going to give you good action. And they did. They beat the shit out of each other. And, you know, they welted each other's back up with the kendo sticks and everything like that. But, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything worse than a no contest in an ODQ match. I think that's like the lamest of the lame. And then um, the Shane McMahon, Braun Strowman stuff. I didn't want to see a count out in a false count anywhere match in WCW. That does, in fact, trump... A no contest and a no DQ Well, look, any, look, WCW was so far beyond anything WWE's ever been as far as, like, just absolute, you know, um, incompetence. WWE's never been incompetent at that level, ever. But um, although the, the Shane McMahon, Braun Strowman stuff tonight was, um, it was, it was like, uh, at the highest level. I mean, this was just, the mentality is, is that, they're trying to find a way for Shane McMahon to be the heel. So the idea is he's just going to be this dick making fun of the dumb guy. Um, yeah, but the I dumb guy's supposed to be a fucking heel. The dumb guy's supposed to be the baby face in this, in this skit. Oh, he is now. Now he's turned baby face. Now he's supposed to be a baby face. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, that Shane... was the least of the problems with that segment. But, but that segment was horrendous. And then AJ Styles and Randy Orton, that finish was horrible. Are you sure that Shane McMahon is supposed to be... A hundred percent. That's why he was acting like a dick. Yes. They they, they thought... I'll this... find out tomorrow. Yeah, no, I've already asked. Um, well, do the Thunderdome people know? I don't Because when he was making fun of the guy, the fans were cheering. Yeah, well, the people who did that may not know, but the idea was is that he's supposed to be... He's supposed to be a dick, and um, Braun Strowman. They feel they felt that this was the only way they could go because the people are going to naturally be. They think the people are naturally going to be cheering Shane against Braun Strowman, and it's, I guess, not what they want for whatever. Dude, reason. Shane was brought back as a babyface, and Braun Strowman's been a heel. Now they don't want the guy to get cheered. You know, I mean, the thing last week was was a heel thing. I mean, he called the guy stupid and dumb and was making fun of him. And well, everything. in storyline, the guy is stupid and dumb, Dave. That is the storyline. Well, how about that promo? That was that was like, you know, that was just the weirdest non promo. But that was the idea. The idea is, is that he's going to go in there and that's going to make him a heel because he's going to do this. Um, he's going to on purpose do shitty promos. Yeah, well, that that's how it's scripted. It wasn't like it wasn't like he forgot anything. That's what was scripted. He did exactly what he was supposed to yeah, be doing. Yeah, but it was like Braun Strowman had to go in there and feed him lines basically. It was brutal. It was one of the worst segments. I couldn't even believe how bad it was. I that and and the other one was the Charlotte Flair with um Dana Brooke and um Mandy Rose. It's like I I couldn't even believe that that made the air. Um but you know, I guess maybe you can't Dude, that one was... Well, dude, let's just start at the beginning. Dana, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose are... are They they are so bad. I mean, Mandy Rose 
is is how would I say it? It's like she doesn't buy her role, and I wouldn't either if I was her. It's like she knows she's being whatever. It's not working. She's being misused, and Dana Brooke can't deliver a line. Um, which is funny because when she was in NXT, I thought like she was a pretty good dick heel, but now it's like um, she can't deliver a line. That her her delivery was so bad of that scripted material that it was like, how did this even make the air? Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.